Every time you type ls in the terminal, you're using a piece of history, a fragment of code born when the internet didn't even exist yet, and which, incredibly, still works today almost exactly the same way. These commands are called core utils, and they are the beating heart of Unix, of Linux, and of everything we know as open source. Small programs, simple, essential, but built with logic so intelligent that they've survived everything, languages, systems, decades. It all begins in the early 70s at Bell Labs. Ken Thompson and Dennis Ritchie didn't just want to create an operating system. They wanted to build a new way of talking to the machine. A language made not of windows or icons, but of words, verbs, actions. That language was the shell, and its words were the commands. At first, the basic utilities weren't even separate. They were written directly into the heart of Unix, in assembly, then in C. But behind it was an idea revolutionary for its time. Do one thing and do it well. Not large monolithic software, but small tools, each with a precise purpose that could be combined together to create complex results. This is the philosophy that forever changed how we think about operating systems. And today it's still the foundation of everything we call Linux. The decisive step came when Dennis Ritchie invented the C language and decided to rewrite Unix in a completely new way portable, understandable, adaptable to any machine. That choice, seemingly technical, was the key to its immortality. It meant that for the first time an operating system could be recompiled and made to work on different computers. And with Unix traveled its fundamental commands, LS, CP, MV, CAT, RM, the same ones we still use today, identical in name and almost identical in behavior. In the 80s, however, Unix wasn't free. It was AT&T property, and anyone who wanted to use it had to pay expensive licenses. That's when a young programmer from MIT, Richard Stallman, decided to change history. He launched the new project with an ambitious goal, to recreate from scratch an entire free Unix system, compatible and open to everyone. He started right from the basics, from the fundamental commands. This is how the first free versions of LS, CP, RM, CAT, and dozens of others were born. At first, they were divided into three packages, file utils, text utils, and shell utils. Only in 2002 were they united into a single project called GNU Core Utils, maintained by programmers like Jim Meyering, who since 1992 has overseen its development with maniacal precision, Paul Eggert, a professor at the University of California specializing in POSIX standards, and Padraig Brady, an Irish engineer who has maintained the project for over 20 years. Men who didn't seek fame, but who have kept alive, line by line, one of the pillars of the modern world. Today, the core utils are just over a hundred small programs. They're tiny files, written in pure C, and the entire package weighs less than 20 megabytes installed, less than a single photo taken with your smartphone. Most commands don't exceed a hundred kilobytes each. You can find them all in specific system folders, slash US bin or slash bin. You can see them with a simple ls slash usr bin or on Debian with dpkel core utils. You'll realize they're everywhere, like an invisible fabric running through the entire operating system. Yet without them, Linux wouldn't exist. Without ls, you couldn't see files. Without cp, you couldn't copy them. Without rm, you couldn't delete them. Every operating system, even the most graphical, uses them behind the scenes. When your file manager moves something, it's actually executing mv. When you delete a file, it calls RM. When you copy, it uses CP. The interface is just clothing. Underneath, there's always Unix. The most fascinating thing is that you can look inside them. The source code of the core utils is public and available to anyone. Inside, you'll find thousands of lines of orderly, clean C, almost poetic in their simplicity. Each command is a small world. The source of yes, for example, takes up just a few lines. It serves to continuously print a word, usually Y, to the screen. It was born to automatically answer yes during interactive installations, but today it's used as a stress test for the CPU. It's so fast it makes the processor temperature rise in seconds. A tiny command, but one that reminds you how much power there is behind a simple terminal. Another example is cat. We all use it to read text files, but actually its name doesn't mean show, but concatenate. Cat was born to join multiple files into one. Only later, with the evolution of habits, did it become the fastest way to display a file on screen. Its simplicity is disarming, but that's exactly the strength of Unix design, a clear idea, built to last. 
And then there are the strangest commands. True does absolutely nothing. It just returns success and is used in scripts for logical tests. False, on the contrary, always fails. Sleep stops execution for a certain number of seconds, introduced to manage pauses between processes on mainframes. TTY shows the name of the terminal in use, a concept that today has lost meaning, but which at the time indicated which physical terminal was connected. Head and tail, born to print only the beginning or end of a file, are today also used to monitor logs in real time. And sort can order millions of lines of text in a flash. It's one of the most optimized programs ever written in C. But there's also DD, the most powerful and most dangerous command ever included in the core utils. Its name derives from IBM mainframe language and uses incomprehensible parameters like if and of, which stand for input file and output file. With DD, you can copy an entire disk, create system images, or destroy everything with a single typing error. That's why many ironically call it disk destroyer. One wrong character and you can completely erase the contents of your computer. Yet despite the risk, it's still today an indispensable tool used every day by system administrators and developers around the world. Each command is a small window into an era when the computer was a language, not an interface. This is the beauty of Coroodles. Small, essential, but incredibly powerful. Each one does one thing, but if you combine them, they can do everything. It's like human language. Words alone don't say much, but together they create meaning. A simple command line can concatenate five, six, ten programs, building logical chains capable of analyzing, transforming, creating. It's a way of thinking, not just a way of using the computer. And this is the true legacy of Unix. Not all systems, however, use the same core oodles. Every Unix family has its own version. BSD systems, like FreeBSD or OpenBSD, have lighter variants, written according to their philosophy and with independent code. In smaller devices like routers or Android smartphones, alternatives like BusyBox are used, which packs dozens of commands into a single tiny file, or ToyBox. And in recent years, an even more modern idea has emerged, UUtils, a project that rewrites all the core utils in Rust language. Same functions, same syntax, but with safer memory management and better performance. A sign that these ideas, 50 years old, are not only not dead, but continue to evolve. Behind this longevity, there's also invisible but fundamental work. Every modification to the core utils passes through a gigantic test suite. Thousands of automatic checks that verify every command behaves exactly as expected in hundreds of different cases. A change of a single line in the code of RM or MV must pass days of testing before being accepted. It's one of the most scrupulously maintained projects in computing history. And the result is extraordinary. GNU Core Utils are designed to work identically on Linux, Mac OS, BSD, and even on Windows through WSL or Cygwin. A command written 40 years ago can still be executed on a completely different system in another technological world without modifications, a form of compatibility that very few software in the world can boast. Core Utils aren't just technical tools. They're philosophy. They're the demonstration that simplicity isn't a limitation, but a form of intelligence. Each command is a lesson in clarity, balance, coherence. There's nothing superfluous, nothing hidden. Everything is readable, everything is logical, everything is under your control. And this is perhaps the greatest legacy of Unix, having taught us that the computer shouldn't hide its logic, but show it to you, openly. Many of the historical developers were motivated not only by technique, but by an idea of freedom. Ken Thompson, Dennis Ritchie, Brian Kernighan, Richard Stallman, very different people, but united by the conviction that knowledge should be shared. The core utils, in the end, are the concretization of that thought. They're the alphabet of a free language, accessible to all, which still today unites students, hackers, and system administrators in every part of the world. When you open a terminal and type a command, you're using the same language that programmers spoke 50 years ago. LS, CP, MV, CAT, RM. They're ancient words, but still alive. They've crossed generations of systems, processors, architectures, and they're still here, identical, perfectly functioning. No graphical interface has ever managed to erase them. No revolution has ever replaced them. They're like the DNA of modern computing. In an era where everything changes continuously, where languages are born and die within a few years, 
These small utilities remain a monument to the longevity of well-written software. They're proof that technology can be eternal when it's born from the right idea. The commands we use today are so ancient and solid they're considered immutable. Changing their behavior would be like changing the rules of grammar in a language. All the software in the world depends on them, and so year after year they're only improved and refined, but never overturned. They don't need marketing, nor annual versions. They only need to exist, and they'll continue to do so for a long time. Core utils aren't just commands. They're a way of thinking, a way of looking at technology as something that must remain understandable, human, and under our control. From LS to CP, from CAT to RM, each command tells a story. And that story is the story of Unix. Rust was born to solve real problems of memory management in complex and multi-threaded systems, where buffer overflows and dangling pointers are commonplace. But core utils don't fall into this category. They're linear programs, without concurrency, with extremely simple memory management. They use fixed buffers, short strings, and direct calls to the operating system. It's true that over the years there have been some CVEs, like those in CRUT, SORT, or base name, but these were rare cases, immediately corrected, often caused by edge conditions or anomalous inputs. To say that core utils aren't secure just because of this would be a stretch. Security isn't the absolute absence of bugs, but the ability to react and correct continuously. Core utils have a very small attack surface, operate on local files and in deterministic contexts, and in 50 years have never caused a systemic security disaster. They've become reliable not because of language, but because of code maturity. The behavior of core utils is governed by POSIX, the standard that defines every detail, parameters, error messages, even the spaces in the output. GNU versions are constantly tested to ensure every result is identical on any platform. Rewriting them in Rust means redoing this compatibility from scratch. And in fact, utils still today isn't fully compliant. Some options behave differently, certain flags are ignored, and error messages change. For the average user, it's irrelevant, but for thousands of automated scripts, it can be disastrous. In an ecosystem based on small components that combine, even a single deviation breaks the chain. The C code of core utils is self-contained. It doesn't depend on external libraries, has no runtime, requires no compiler updates. You can recompile it on architectures from 40 years ago, and it will continue to work. Rust, on the other hand, is still in full evolution. The compiler changes often, dependencies must be updated, and the toolchain is heavier. This reduces what in theoretical computer science is called temporal robustness, the ability to survive over time without constant maintenance. Core utils in C can be recompiled even 20 years from now, those in Rust perhaps not. Rust is a modern and powerful language, but also complex. Its architecture of borrowing, ownership, and lifetime is brilliant for concurrent systems, but redundant for simple programs. Core utils were also born as an educational tool. They show directly how the operating system works. A young programmer can read the code of CP or CAT and understand how files are opened, how you read from a stream, how you handle an error. Rust, instead, hides these operations under layers of abstraction. It's not bad, but it changes the very meaning of the project, from explanatory code to intentional code. The first shows you how the machine works, the second imposes how you must think about it. And for software that represents the cultural foundation of the entire Unix ecosystem, this opacity isn't a step forward, it's an educational loss. It's true, in some benchmarks, utils is faster than new core utils, but the differences are minimal and largely depend on external factors like the file system, cache, or compilation options. The reality is that the speed of core utils isn't limited by the language, but by the kernel and I.O. When you copy or move large files, the bottleneck is the disk, not C. You can gain a few percentage points in certain cases, 
but at the price of breaking compatibility with millions of scripts and tools that expect behavior perfectly defined for decades. A small performance advantage doesn't compensate for the loss of stability of an entire ecosystem. Behind this rush to rewrite everything in Rust, there's a deeper tendency, the confusion between innovation and replacement. Rust is an extraordinary language, and it has its place in kernels, in browsers, in high-performance servers. But it doesn't make sense to use it to rewrite code that's already stable, correct, and understandable. Core utils don't need to be fixed. They only need to be maintained, updated, and understood. Changing language isn't evolution. It's starting from scratch, losing half a century of experience and collective optimization. Software like Core Utils isn't a museum piece, but a living organism that continues to function and adapt. The idea of replacing it just because Rust is safer is an oversimplification. Security in foundational software isn't obtained by changing language, but by maintaining coherence, compatibility, and predictability. Rust and Core Utils represent two complementary ideas, not opposing ones. Rust embodies the search for new paradigms, core utils the art of permanence. One doesn't have to cancel the other. For this reason, rewriting them isn't bad, but it's not progress either. It's an experiment, an interesting exercise, but not a necessity. And in a world that changes at dizzying speed, perhaps the truly revolutionary act is exactly this, leaving alone what has worked for 50 years.